a revolutionary breakthrough in health is coming. Thanks to the work of Dr. Robert Wolf and his team of researchers, the impact of essential amino acids on healthy living, rapid healing, greater strength, and sharper mental capacity is coming to light. Listen to this clip from a seminar featuring Dr. Robert Wolf, world-renowned expert on nutrition and muscle metabolism, as well as a leading authority on amino acids. So your research in human physiology and metabolism has been going on for almost 50 years. You said a little bit about it, but tell us how it got started. Well, the start, I don't know if I really call it research, but I was in the ninth grade and uh, was a basketball player, but way too skinny. I, wanted, I thought I could make the varsity, but uh, as soon as we started practice, I was just getting pushed around because I was, actually I grew to this height when I was in the eighth grade. So, you know, I thought I was gonna be pretty tall never kept going, but uh, uh, which now I'm kind of glad for. At the time, I was thinking I was going to be a lot bigger than I turned out to be. But in any case, uh, I was only 160 pounds, and it just was not enough. And I was really at a loss for how to, uh, to uh, put on muscle. There just was so little information about how to... And, and a lot of you may be familiar with the, with the fitness guru, Jack LaLanne. And Jack LaLanne actually started his exercise um, uh, business in a, in a gym a couple of floors below my father's office in downtown Oakland. And uh, so he had me over there and I was lifting weights and, and he, was, he, he believed in nutrition, but he didn't have any clue as to about, I mean, I was taking wheat germ oil and, and gagging that down. And to this day, I've never understood why I did that, but it was a, uh, <laughs> It was an indication of dedication and a green sort of slurry that, uh, that was just left you with the horrible breath for the rest of the day. But the beyond that... So the dating know, came later on yeah, in high school? Yeah. Mm. There were no... I was not at the senior prom. And, uh, uh, but I, I, when I went to uh, Cal, I took a class from a guy who subsequently became quite a prominent physiologist. And, and I realized that, that the key to doing this is understanding physiology, but that there was still, there was so little known about muscle. And uh, we knew all of the research at the time related to exercise was on heart rate and, and uh, car the cardiac function and, um, and, and other aspects of, of oxygen consumption, but nothing about how muscle was actually regulated. And in fact, we published the first study, which was in 1980, that showed amino acid had any impact on muscle. The, the, go on, the, the, the mantra at the time, which was in the major book on protein nutrition, was that amino acids had no effect on muscle. So, you know, this, you know, if we you're all- you're a researcher, this is relatively new science. It really is, you know, if, if people have forgotten when you see a shelf full, a whole shelf in, in Walmart of protein products and everything, you think, well, we've always known about this. It wasn't even known when I started this work that amino acids had any, or protein had any impact on our muscle. So we've come a long way and, uh, and uh, you know, it's just been gratifying to see that it, it really has sort of panned out as being important, you know, so. Uh, well, a long story short, go on and brag a little. So you, you went into the Air Force and then you went into the MBA. Well, I, w I was actually in an Air Force program and that was, uh, uh, I, I, what happened was I, when I, I played basketball at Cal, and I actually also lettered in golf and track as well, so it's kind of an unusual three-sport letterman, but it uh, uh, wouldn't be possible nowadays to, uh, to do that, but, uh, but that's what I did, and uh, so sports were, were very important to me, and uh, I was drafted by the Warriors, and uh, I made the team and started the season and then was drafted by the military. This was the Vietnam era. And, and opted for a research program uh, through an Air Force research program in, in physiology. And that's really where I started the real training. But, but it gave me the tools, but it wasn't until I, until I got my first job, which was at the Harvard Medical School. And the focus was severely burned children. And uh, my, my research had been in cardiovascular work, and, and that, they were concerned about that. That was, at the time, what people were looking at. But I looked at these children that uh, had these enormous livers and you could literally see the muscle wasting away from day to day where the way the severe burns are treated is the burn skin's cut off right down to the muscle level and then the, what little skin is left is expanded so it's like a mesh. And they put the mesh on and it eventually grows in. But you can see the muscle fibers 
and you could see these muscle fibers shrinking on a day-to-day -day basis. The catabolic stress was so much. So, so that um, survival was really tough in those days, and it was two things. One, they had so much fat in the liver, and they lost so much muscle. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my focus became entirely how can we slow down this loss of muscle and decrease the liver fat. And everything really stemmed from there. I ultimately ended up uh, focusing on muscle in all ranges. I worked as a consultant for the US Olympic Committee for 20 years. So all range from these severely burned children that couldn't even walk to Olympic athletes. Uh, so I think I, I, I developed a, an understanding of every <clears throat> level of, of muscle performance and why it's so important to be able to get out of a chair and why it's so important to be able to lower your time in the marathon by one minute over a two hour, two and a half, two hour, 20 minute time period. You know, it's all relevant and, and I think it's, it's really been a, a, a tremendous opportunity to have all these different experiences. We must be very gratified that what kind of started off as this personal venture to improve yourself is now helping so many people. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's really kind of a dream where your hobby or your interests, your fun interests, turns into a lifetime work. So it's, it's really never felt like where, that's why I probably should be retired now, but I have no intention of retiring because it's uh, still really my hobby. If you found this video helpful, like, share, and subscribe. For Dr. Wolf's full presentation, see the link below. To live stronger at any age, visit myohealth.com and take the 30-day MyoHealth Challenge.